Well, hey fans, welcome back to another movie review, and today we're talking about Alien Romulus. So before I get to the rest of my review, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, MoviePass. So MoviePass is back and it's better than ever. It's a subscription-based ticketing service and I've been using it for a few months now and I just think it's great. And they have this neat new black card and it feels great and it's very easy to use. And unlike your AMC A-list or your Regal Unlimited, you can use MoviePass at almost any theater. And it is very simple to use. They now go off of a points-based system, so you pay every month and that will vary depending on uh, the market that you live in and you'll get a certain amount of points to use for movies and the price in terms of points for the movies varies depending on the day of the week that you go to the theater the time of the showing and how recently the movie has been released so what you'll do is you'll go into the app you'll click the movie that you want to see unlock the card and then pay and you can also pick the online option for just a few more points if you don't want to wait in line so again thank you to movie pass so alien romulus is a sci-fi horror film directed by Fetty Alvarez, starring Kaylee Spaney, David Johnson, uh, Archie Renault, Isabella Merced, Spike Fern, and Eileen Wu. It is the seventh film in the Alien franchise, and it is actually set between Alien and Aliens, and it follows these destitute young teenage to like young 20-somethings on this mining colony called Jackson Star. The main character, Rain, when she's completed uh, what she's needed to do in terms of mining to leave the planet, she wants to go to this other planet called Yvaga to live out the rest of her life. But in the middle of her trying to get her, you know, papers to leave, they up her quota and she's stuck there for like another six years. She doesn't want to do that. So she finds her ex-boyfriend and he says, hey, there's this abandoned space colony right off the edge of the planet. We can go there take some hypersleep pods and we can all go live peacefully on another planet. We don't have to stay here. And with her and her adopted brother, Andy, who's a synth that her dad fixed up for her, they decide to go and the synth will actually help them access the ship. And of course, once they get on the ship, they find the hypersleep pods, but what else do they find? The Xenomorphs. And I have to say, I'm, I'm a big fan of Fede Alvarez. His 20, I can't remember if it was 2013, 2012, whenever it was, but when he redid Evil Dead, so good it's a great film that has since been kind of like wrapped into the canon of that series such a great horror film and hearing that he took this on i was excited to see what he would do he is one of the new masters of horror he does a good job with a small budget making a good film and bringing a lot out of his actors and the way he shot this film even from like the opening scene it feels like it belongs in the late 70s early 80s it fits visually right in between alien and aliens like like the time period does and i think that is a good job it doesn't suffer from what some people call like the star wars syndrome where like you know how the prequels looked a lot better than the original trilogy and you can say the same thing about prometheus and alien covenant those films look a lot better than all of the previous alien films even though within the timeline they take place before the events of alien aliens alien 3 and alien resurrection so i think he did a good job of you know matching up that timeline in terms of visuals the best he could. The score by Benjamin Wallfish is totally great. His use of sound, his use of the lack of sound in certain scenes is, is wonderful. It really does fit within it, meaning it sounds like all the other Alien movies. And it just provides like an eerie tone, even like throughout the whole film, you just get like a sense of, oh, this isn't good and oh, what's going to happen and what is in that shadow. I think he does a good job of matching the music to those certain situations. The acting in the film is fine. Of course, this was originally meant to go straight to Hulu, just like Prey was when Disney bought 20th Century Fox. You know, they had Predator and Alien movies in the works and they were just gonna use that to build up their digital service. And after Prey did very well on Hulu and they're like, why didn't we release this in theaters? They immediately moved Alien Romulus to a theatrical release. And that was a great idea. I think the movie's already made its initial budget back, uh, which is fantastic. But I digress. It was a great thing to put in theaters because using the smaller budget, using these not as well-known actors, allowed for them to make the best movie they could. Uh, like I said, Kaylee Spain is she's fine. Archie Renault is fine. Isabella Merced, I don't feel like she's really in enough to shine as much. She's probably the second biggest name in this after Kaylee Spaney. They're still both pretty, you know, small name actors, but her role is minimal amongst the rest of the cast. 
except for Eileen Wu, who's just in it to die. But the standout for me is David Johnson. He portrays the synth Andy, and I think this is the first black synth that we've seen in the Alien franchise. And like when I first saw him on screen, I didn't really care for the character, the way he fidgeted and twitched. It's, it, there's an in-movie reason for this, but I just didn't care. I was like, oh, I hope he kind of gets destroyed soon. But once he gets like an upgraded chip from uh, Rook, and I'll get back to Rook, he becomes like this cold, calculated, but still like in the best interest of the crew type of, you know, Android. Like all the things you're doing, he's, he becomes more or less of like, I love you, I want to save you, to like, I love you, I want to save you. But in order to do that, she has to die. That's the kind of Android he becomes. And at that moment, I really loved the way his character switched but still kind of kept the same base personality. I hope David Johnson, I hope his career just skyrockets after this because wonderful acting by this. And of course, he's British. The, the, all the black British actors are just good and taking all these uh, good American roles. But just bravo to him. He was my favorite part of the movie. I liked the connection with this movie to the previous Alien movie, like why these xenomorphs are on the specific ship and like how did they get there? That, for the most part, makes sense. There, there's like some questions I still have about how they got so many, and I think that could be explained in a future film. Because on this ship, there is another synth which who uh, Andy gets his chip from named Rook. Now, this Rook android is designed to look just like Ash from the first Alien film. They use like a very sophisticated puppet along with like some, I guess, deep fake. Since the actor Ian Holm is dead, they just get like a voice actor to copy his voice. They may use a uh, re-speecher as well. I'm not exactly sure, but he sounds, and there was like one scene where it just looks a little off. For the most part, I think it worked very well because you know, a lot of these androids are based off of each other so they just look the same but I think that whole section of the movie I, I think it worked like I said I would like to know more about how they got that many aliens they, they, they explain it but they don't really explain like how because the whole lore about the aliens having a queen is kind of skipped over in this movie and I'm not quite sure how they made it work there is another fun thing about the aliens and something I've always wondered so when you have the previous alien movies when the chest burster comes out the alien is like this little, small, lizard-like creature. Now, all of a sudden, like a few hours later, he's this big, black xenomorph. So they show the in-between stage. Once the chest burst comes out, it sheds its skin and forms a cocoon. So you actually get to see this cocoon in the alien mature inside and come out, which the cocoon definitely looks like a vagina. It is, that's exactly what it's supposed to be. There is a lot of phallic and vaginal references in the imagery in this movie. And I mean, it worked as alien. They, they put that through this entire franchise. That's how it is. But like, it, it was a really enjoyable presence. Like in terms of a score, I'm gonna give it a decent eight out of 10. Like I, I think there are more things to like about this movie than to not like. And there is, and I'm not gonna spoil it, but like, so the final act of this movie, like when you think the heroes have escaped and they're off to have their off into the sunset moment, there is more to the movie than that. And it can kind of divide people in terms of like how this ties to a previous alien entry. And I thought it was a fine scene. I don't think it was necessary. I think you could have ended the movie before that, but them adding that scene was an interesting thing to see. Now, what I would like to see, I would like to see Betty Alvarez return to the alien franchise. I think, like I said, he's a good horror director. I don't know if you can how you will continue the story with uh, Rain and Andy. I'm sure they can find a way, but what I want is a prequel about the uh, ship they were on, the Renaissance. So if they did like an Alien Renaissance prequel that's before Alien Romulus, I would like to know exactly how that crew got taken out and if anybody survived, that would be a good movie that I would like to see. Uh, by the way, that's how this movie got its name. The ship, the Renaissance is divided into two halves, the Romulus and the Remus. So Romulus is where a lot of the story takes place. And another thing before I get, and this is gonna be one of my longest reviews, but like, there's a beautiful scene when the survivors are getting back to their ship and the Renaissance is crashing into like the rings, the ice rings of this planet. It looks phenomenal. And then later on in the like final scene of the movie, you can still see the ship crashing in the background on the ice ring. That is, in the, that is a great attention to detail. And I'm just glad that that whole scene was in the movie. I want to thank you guys again for joining me for this movie review. Remember, you can find the full review on YouTube and the website, flipfrogllc.com slash flixfrog. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit. And please, pretty please, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll be seeing you.